Throughout The Sopranos' iconic cast of characters, there have certainly been a few that have rubbed fans and Tony the wrong way. From Christopher when he sat on Cosette and accidentally suffocated her while he was high on heroin, to even Polly when he too suffocated one of his mother's friends to death. But as time went on, there seemed to be no two individuals who aggravated us more and Tony as well. As these two individuals seemed to get under everyone's skin more and more as time went on. And these two individuals are none other than Ralph Cifaretto and Richie April. That is why in this video, I will be covering who was worse, Richie or Ralph. And in this video, I will also display the similarities that both characters shared within one another throughout their time on the series. And to fully understand who was worse during their time on The Sopranos, I will be looking at the characters themselves, the acts of violence that they committed, and who provided Tony and his crew members with the most amount of stress. First off, we will look at Richie April simply because he appeared before Ralph Cifaretto. To begin, the first violent act that Richie did was paralyzing Beansy Gaeta. While this act is terrible and downright cruel in its own way, it will be viewed as a minor act of violence when we discuss the character of Ralph later on in this video. This incident with Beansy is obviously a heinous act of violence. I mean, Richie might as well just whacked Beansy at this point, never mind putting him in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. And the entire scenario is so silly looking back on it. Richie really paralyzed Beansy and ruined the rest of his life. And for what? Because he couldn't give him a piece of what was once his in the pizza parlor? For starters, Richie had no right going straight to Beansy and trying to shake him down to begin with, as he should have went straight to Tony first to discuss the possibility of getting back in business with Beansy. And it's not just going back into business with Beansy, whether or not it was Beansy or whoever, Richie still should have gone straight to Tony and obey the rules of the mafia. The paralyzation of Beansy seriously upset Tony and many others in the New Jersey area. Silvio, Polly, Uncle Junior, and others all knew about the accident, and guys within Tony's crew were upset about the news of Richie attacking Beansy, as Beansy was close friends with a lot of Tony's crew. Even despite Richie carrying a large amount of respect, even after he was released from prison, Richie was way out of line for what he did to Beansy, and many even looked down on Richie, even despite who his late brother was, and the legendary legacy that Richie carried within the family. And with this being the first thing that Richie did since getting out of prison, he was obviously not off to a good start in anyone's eyes, especially in the eyes of Tony. The very next thing that Richie did was that he started to date Tony's sister in Janice. This, without Tony's approval, is a terrible decision for anyone to make. As Tony says, there are men in the can that are better looking than his sister. And with this, we all know how this ended for Richie. But the timing of this decision is what really makes it look bad on Richie's part. As he's straight out of prison, doesn't have much money towards his name, as this is why he has to go back on the street and start earning again and targets Beansy, he doesn't have a place to stay, and on top of it all, Janice is trying to sell her mother's house. So we know that Richie will want a piece of the house too once it sells. And we saw already from a surprise visit from Tony that Richie plans on moving into Livia's home and is willing to spot Janice some money, despite not having any money of his own. With Richie being gone for 10 years, a lot has changed since he was back on the street earning. When Richie came back into the Mafia world, it was at the start of a new millennium. The Mafia's golden days were behind them more and more once loyal and dedicated members to La Cosa Nostra were turning their backs on their friends to become government informants. Technology and time itself was changing, and while the government was coming up with new innovative ways on proving there was a mafia, the Mafia 2 and Tony as well needed to come up with new ways and rules on how to avoid these situations and getting caught by the government. So Tony and Uncle Junior came up with meeting other made members in public locations to blend in with the public eye. Meeting Tony at a mall, meeting Uncle Junior at a doctor's office was not the traditional way that Richie was so used to operating. It was far out of his comfort zone and traditional roots of the Mafia. Along with this, he could no longer speak to Tony directly in front of or inside Satrials. 
These new rules and ways of conducting business for Richie only added to his aggravated and short-tempered mind. Having known that Richie was money-hungry since getting out of prison and trying to shake down Beansy, we also saw him do the same when he was successfully and unsuccessfully trying to shake down David Scatino. With this, we saw that Scatino was into Richie from the very beginning thanks to local card games and monthly visits that Richie would make at Scatino's sporting goods store. And when Richie finds out that Scatino's envelope is only $200 shy, he begins to charge interest on Scatino. With Richie waiting on Scatino to make his payment in full, it's unbeknownst to him that Scatino somehow got a chance to play at the executive card game that Tony is running. And when Richie catches Scatino at the executive card game, he decides to disrupt the card game despite it belonging to Tony. This was because he was extorting Scatino first before Tony lended him the money to play in the game. This only leads to more problems coming Richie's way, and only more problems and stress that Tony has to deal with as a result of Richie. And it's here where Richie shockingly states that he and others do not agree with the new rules that Tony has arranged. And when Richie walks away, he spits on the ground. This is a clear sign of disrespect towards Tony. But what's interesting here is that Richie blatantly thinks that these rules are Tony's own rules. When however, these rules of the mafia that Tony is preaching have always been in place, well before Tony's tenure, as Richie doesn't respect Tony being the boss simply because he is older than Tony and still views Tony as a child. This is a problem that Tony would face throughout the entirety of the series. When Richie doesn't want to build Beansy a ramp, despite it being Tony's wish, we see Richie pay Beansy a visit threatening him that he'll basically kill him if he goes to Tony again. So we can see that Richie doesn't care for Tony's rules or respect Tony at all. To get back on Tony's good side, however, Richie decides to give Tony the infamous jacket that he took off of Rocco DeMeo. And when Tony secretly gives this jacket to his maid's husband, this is the final straw for Richie, as his next move is to take Tony out. And to make matters worse, we can see that Dick Barone is charging Richie double to dump his trucks on his stops. And because of this, Richie decides to start messing with the garbage company by dumping garbage and selling cocaine along the routes. By the end of his short tenure, Richie had enough. He was willing to take Tony out once and for all, but he needed support. He knew that his fiance Janice would be behind him taking out her brother because he was shorting them money when Tony gave Richie only $50,000 to put out on the street. Richie also turned to Uncle Junior and Albert to back him up when taking Tony out. But as we all know, he couldn't sell the idea of taking out a boss as he's not well respected enough. Because of all this going on around Richie, things were extremely stressful and especially between the happy couple in Richie and Janice. They had a wedding to pay for but they couldn't afford all of Janice's acquired taste, as basically it was Tony's fault for not giving them enough money. So Janice's dream wedding may be put on hold due to a lack of funds coming from her fiance. And when a heated argument turned sour and physical, Janice decided she would end Richie's tenure on The Sopranos. And shockingly, Richie's tenure will be at the fate of her and not her very own brother, whom Richie had all the beef with, marking the end of Richie April. Rotating to Ralph, we knew right away that he was going to cause trouble for Tony, as the very first thing that Ralph did was torch one of Albert's trucks. With Tony preaching to Ralph to cause no more fires, it's ironic that the tipping point of Ralph was a fire that caused his demise, as this is something that we'll get to later on in this video. With the introduction of Ralph, we learn that he is dating Rosalie April, who was Richie's sister-in-law. And with Tony preaching to everyone to keep Jackie Jr. out of the mafia lifestyle, we watch as Ralph doesn't listen, as he takes him along to roughen up a client of Ralph's, thus starting Jackie's wannabe career as a gangster. It's because of this wrongful decision by Ralph to wrongfully influence Jackie Jr. is the reasoning on why Ralph gets passed over for being captain, as Tony decides to give Gigi captain instead. And the decision by Tony to not make Ralph a captain would only cause more stress for Tony as we would see throughout the series. When Vito's cousin gets seriously injured by Mustang Sally, we can see Ralph make dumb remarks and only prove to Tony and everyone else that Tony made the right decision by not making Ralph captain. 
And with the order to have Old Man Bacala take on the hit, Ralph mocks and questions Tony and Gigi's orders. But it wasn't just Jackie Jr. that Ralph was being a bad influence to, it was everyone around Tony's crew and even Tony's family. As we see during a Sunday dinner at Tony's house, that Ralph is reminiscing on the past. Being a bad influence towards AJ and even doing cocaine in Tony's bathroom with Janice. And to make matters worse, this is all happening while his girlfriend at the time, Rosalie, is left alone at the dinner table. It's no surprise for mobsters to have themselves a Gumar on the side. And Ralph was no different. As come the third season, we were introduced to Ralph's girlfriend, Tracy. And it's here in the infamous episode of University where we saw just how cruel Ralph can become. First, we can see just how crazy Ralph is, but also how weird he is as well, as he is weirdly obsessed with the film Gladiator starring Russell Crowe. And when he takes his obsession to an entire new level by striking Georgie in the eye with a metal chain, we can see just how crazy Ralph is. It's during this time where Ralph and Tracy's relationship is on the rocks, as Tracy discovers that she's pregnant and that the father is Ralph. And during another bada bing party, when Tracy makes a comment towards Ralph is where things really get out of hand. As the two head outside to talk, Ralph makes a horrible comment about the baby's future if it were to be a girl. Some shoving ensues, and Tracy actually lands a punch on Ralph, where Ralph responds by shockingly beating Tracy and her unborn baby to death. This of course seriously upset Tony, as he viewed Tracy the same way he viewed his daughter Meadow, as a young, innocent girl who had her entire life in front of her. Because of the killing of Tracy, there is a beef between Tony and Ralph which only adds to the hatred that Ralph brings to every appearance on the series. We watch as Ralph turns down a drink from Tony, which only makes Tony hate Ralph more. But the incidents kept on coming with Ralph, as he then proceeded to give Jackie Jr. his first gun despite still being a bad influence on him. And even with Tony preaching over and over again to keep Jackie Jr. away from the mafia lifestyle, Ralph still forced it on him. As we eventually saw that Ralph's bad leadership and influence went too far, as he costed Jackie Jr. his life by convincing him to rob Eugene Pontecorvo's card game. Like I mentioned in my previous video on the downfall of Ralph, it was one thing after another for Ralph, as he then poked fun at Ginny Sacrimony, which almost started a war between the two families. And if that wasn't enough, Ralph prank phone called Polly's mother in retaliation for little Polly telling the joke to Polly, who eventually told John. But the final nail in the coffin for Ralph was when he shockingly killed Tony's beloved horse in Pile Line, as Tony had finally had enough of Ralph's antics. Between the innocent murder of Tracy and her unborn baby, the cocaine, the joke about Ginny's sacrimony, the lying, the lack of leadership he displayed to Jackie Jr. and everyone else, the torching of the trucks, the lack of patience Ralph displayed when it came to being captain, prank phone calling Polly's mother, and killing Pile Mai, Tony ultimately had enough and did everyone a favor. Throughout their tenures on The Sopranos, Ralph and Richie were loose cannons. The two of them couldn't keep their emotions in check. Whether it was lashing out at parties, unable to control their anger and aggression, disrespecting the boss and the family, and making off-color remarks, Ralph and Richie were eerily similar. As the two looked at dating Tony's sister Janice to salivate their mafia careers, and to try and get in close with a distant Tony. In Tony's eyes, he was quickly done with the two of them. He was impatient to say the least, as he quickly passed over Ralph and told off Richie very quickly into him being back on the street. And because of their stupidity and lack of leadership, the two mobsters weren't respected enough amongst their peers as well. The two also dabbled into cocaine, with Ralph using it and Richie selling it. The two were also part of the Cursed Apparel crew and eventually became captains of the crew, and both eerily died at the hands of a soprano. Richie was a man who was completely stuck in the past of the mafia, whereas Ralph was pure evil. Ralph had no soul and was the closest thing to the devil since Tony's mother, Livia. It's unfortunate that both mobsters couldn't get an official whacking in the old school mafia way. Personally, I believe Ralph was so much more worse than Richie April. Sure, Richie paralyzed Beansy, but he didn't beat a stripper to death and her unborn baby, and he didn't kill Tony's beloved horse in Pile Mai. What do you think? Who was worse, Ralph Cifaretto or Richie April? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. For more Sopranos content, keep it locked here, right here on this channel.